The Central Valley of California is one of the largest fruit and vegetable growing regions in the nation. If tefritted fruit flies became established, the entire industry would be decimated. This work is a really good example of how foundational genomic resources can be used in applied science. Here we are in Hilo, Hawaii. It looks like paradise, but it's under threat by invasive species. Not only native animals are threatened, but also agriculture. We are here to see how genomics is used to combat this threat. What's the economic importance of fruit fly control? Fruit flies cause a large amount of damage to the fruits, but in addition to that, they can cause uh, quarantines to be imposed, limitations on trade of the commodities throughout the area. What we're trying to do is maintain uh, fly-free areas in the mainland United States so that the large agricultural areas that produce uh, high value fruits and vegetable crops can continue to do so and continue to trade worldwide. Fruit flies have been a problem in Hawaii for about 100 years, and actually USDA has been studying them here for about that same period of time. Fruit flies are an enormous problem worldwide, and they're a problem because they like the same things that we like. They really like fruit. And so what happens with fruit flies is that the adult females lay their eggs inside the fruit, and the eggs will hatch, and you end up with larvae inside the fruit. Nobody likes a piece of fruit with maggots in it. But more seriously, it's also a problem for quarantine. You can't export fruit that has fruit fly or has been exposed to fruit flies. When you discover a fruit fly, how do you know what species it is? That's a good question. So when these things show up in the mainland United States, they usually come through uh, cargo shipments uh, in passenger baggage at the airports or on ships, or they could be mailed here through the US Postal Service or other things like that. Often when they show up in this material, it's in their host fruit in a very early uh, larval stage, which is a maggot. The maggots of these flies is not well defined. So we're developing genome-wide panels that can be used to identify the species of these flies. So essentially a fly would come in, we could grind it up in the lab, run a quick diagnostic assay, and from that identify it to species so that regulators can react quickly and effectively. So the main question when we're dealing with intercepted fruit flies, often in the form of maggots in the continental United States, is a two-part question. What is it, what species of fruit fly, and where did it come from? Now the first question, what is it, what species of fruit fly, we answer using phylogenomics. So we amass a giant database of fruit flies from across multiple different genera and find the best genomic markers that delimit those species. With those maybe five or 10 best genes, we develop a diagnostic tool that can delimit the species of these flies without having to rear them to adulthood. The second question we answer using population genomics. So in this case, we have sampled tens of thousands of flies from across the native distributions of these flies in Southeast Asia, Central and South America, et cetera. And then we use those samples to generate genome-wide SNP data sets to assess the population structure of this species across its native range. If a fly, in this case a melon fly, shows up in a piece of fruit, they can pull that diagnostic panel out of the diagnostic toolbox and use that to compare the intercepted sample to the native genetic diversity that we see across the globe. And with that panel of SNPs, we can tell where the actual flies came from. So when they find these infestations, what do they do? The traditional reaction to an invasive species coming into an area has been to come at it with things like insecticides. The Integrated Pest Management Program for the medfly has proven to be an effective alternative to eradicate this population from the mainland United States. What is the medfly program and how has it been successful? One of those components is sterile insect technique. The genetic sexing technology has allowed the medfly program to be successful through use of the temperature-sensitive lethal trait. This allows rapid exclusion of the females. Then the males are reared to the pupal stage. These pupae, over 150 million per week, are sent to California. There they are close to adult and released by airplane. 
And when those sterile male flies are in the fields, any wild female flies in the area will mate with these sterile males, produce no viable offspring, causing population level suppression and hopefully eventually eradication. How do you control fruit flies other than med flies? For flies other than med flies, they go, still go through the integrated pest management program. They have trapping, they have fruit stripping, uh, things like that to try to suppress the population. But what they don't have is that sterile insect technique component. So what we're interested in doing is expanding the sterile insect technique to new species. And we want to make sure we have tools at our disposal to, to implement to keep these flies uh, suppressed and eradicated. One of the cornerstones of SIT is the availability of a genetic sexing strain. So a genetic sexing strain is basically a strain where you are able to separate males from females at a very, very large scale. A genetic sexing strain exists for the medfly, which is called the Vienna line that was developed by IAEA. In this strain, there are two traits that enable you to genetically sex males from females. One is white pupae, so females have white pupae in contrast to males which have a wild type brown pupae. We're identifying the genes for white pupae and TSL through a variety of techniques where we integrate classical genetics, RNA-seq, and whole genome resequencing to identify a very short list of genes. And there's temperature-sensitive lethal. Females are homozygous for this mutation, which means that if you increase the temperature, the females will die, and then only male flies will emerge. And you can visually see that there are no white pupae left. So once we've found our candidate genes, what we can do is design guide RNAs to target um, exons in our genes of interest. We then inject those guide RNAs along with a Cas9 protein into early stage embryos and then recreate the phenotype in a new species of interest. What are the implications of this work? So this is a, a multi-billion dollar problem. We're always gonna have invasive pests coming into the United States. And I think this is a way that we can use an existing system, apply it to new pests, and have a great resource to control these pests, eradicate them, and prevent establishment.